Thank you, Mr. Land, and thanks, Bob. Now, you see the New Testament reading this morning. It's long. I want you to relax and listen to the Word of God. And actually, it starts on, started on page 668, and it goes through page 1670 of the New Testament. And it's John chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. That's a long one. Basically, it talks about last week. As we listen to the word of the Bible. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany. The village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick. was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, the sickness <coughs> will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. And Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. Yet, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and you want, and and yet you want to go, you, excuse me, and yet you are going back there. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a daylight? A man who walks by day will not stumble. For he sees by this world's light. It is when he walks it by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. And Jesus had, speaking, had been speaking of his death. But his disciples thought he meant not to sleep. So when he told them, plainly Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas called Didymus said to the rest of the disciples, let also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. <clears throat> and many Jews has come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. And listen to what uh, Martha said. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would have been, would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask of him. 
And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. <coughs> Martha answered, I know he will rise again on the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whosoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said, yes, Lord. She told him, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here. And she said, and is he asking for you? And when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus has not yet entered into the village. But he was still at a place where Martha had met him. And when the Jews who had been there with Mary in the house comforted her, notice how quickly she got up and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. And when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, the exact word that her sister said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? Jesus said, where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind and the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, come to the tomb. It was a cave, a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time, there's a bad odor. For it has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you if you believe you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing there, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with stripes of linen and cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave cloths and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what Jesus did and put their faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. God. I see that was uh, the whole story of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Ah, oh, well, Lazarus, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about Jesus. I'm thinking about the resurrection. The story, the sermon, it's on the board then and it's on the board. It's a matter of life and death. That is 
the shoes then. They had four days. And Jesus asked his sister, if you believe, I will raise him from the dead. See, Jesus has done so many miracles. And he did what he said. It was a matter of life and death, and Lazarus was very ill. Martha and her sister Mary did everything they could to help, but to no avail. Like we do, we don't feel well, so we don't want to go to the doctor. We use this, this, and every other little over-the-counter medication. I do it. Many of us do. So when they could not succeed, they sent for Jesus. They knew that if Jesus laid his hand upon their brother, he would make him well. They knew because Jesus has seen others in miraculous ways. He made the lame walk, the blind see, clean, cleanly, the lepers, everything possible, all the diseases that are out there then. He was a wonderful healer. And he loved Lazarus. He loved us all. And we love him. Sometimes it would go, he, this is Jesus, would go to their homes and have to share a meal with them. And teach them of the laws and the prophets. See, Mary would sit on Jesus' feet and close to Jesus. But Martha was busy preparing the food, getting the table ready, and she was like, Mary, I need help. But Mary was so engrossed in Jesus that she could sit there for hours listening to Jesus. So when Lazarus grew ill, they called upon Jesus, certain that help was on its way. But their certainty, their certainty, soon turned to despair. Lazarus died. That's a fact. And they laid him in the stool, and there was still no sign of Jesus. Mary was sure, sure what Mary was so sure, sure that Jesus would come. <coughs> Confusion mixed with disappointment. Mary was very disappointed. Why had he ignored their needs? Wasn't he the one that says, Ask and you shall receive? Well, they asked and heard that Jesus was coming. I'm sorry, I got this thing. <coughs> and heard that Jesus was coming, she went out. This is Martha, went out to meet him. She went to him and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would still have been alive. Those words may have been an insult, or there was definitely faith that Martha has in Jesus. And Martha continued to have that faith, even though Jesus had disappointed them by not saving their brother Lazarus from death. And she said to Jesus, "By even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Sometimes it's hard to remain faithful when you are hurt. <coughs> Very true. But Martha held on to her belief in the Lord. And her faith was your brother will rise again. 
We all knew that. That's what Mark said. Most Jews believed that we would be resurrected on the last day. And Martha told him. She knew that. But then Jesus stole her something she did not yet know. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. That's in John chapter 11, verses 25. And then he asked Martha, do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. I think for her, it was enough to know that Jesus was the one God had promised to send. Even in some of what Jesus said was a mystery, she knew that she could trust what he said because she knew who he was and who had sent him. After that, she came back to the house and told Mary that Jesus had come and that he was looking for her. <clears throat> Mary hurried out to meet him. Many of the people saw her dashed out. Like a jet plane. They assumed she was going to the tomb to mourn her brother. And they followed her. <clears throat> And when she came to a place where Jesus was, she knelt at his feet, overcome by emotion, and said exactly the words that her partner said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would still have been alive. Now Jesus looked at her, and those who followed her, and when he saw how they were crying out in distress, he became, he became very disturbed. He was moved by the pain and asked, Where have you laid the body? They said, Lord, come and see. And then Jesus began to weep. Some of the crowd assumed that he was mourning Lazarus. And they said, See how he loved it? But some said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man could have kept this man from dying? But I think Jesus weeping was different. They cried out the louder they lost. It was the way they were taught. Some said that the more the person was loved, the louder was the mourning. Some people even hired folks to come and mourn and wail over the, over the deceased to show that the person was loved. See, the friends and family weren't enough, so they had more people that came in. I don't think he was crying for Lazarus alone. I think he was crying for all of us, for the terrible pain of death itself. God's children not, were not created for death. Listen to this, people of God, but for life. That we might give glory to God. The terrible power of death disturbs him, and that's why he went. And when they got to the tomb, Jesus asked, that the stone be rolled away. And the martyr was quickly focused. Lord, already there's a stench because he has been dead for four days. Martha, Martha always worries and distracted by many things. Luke chapter 10, verses 41. The Lord is about to answer our prayers and give our glory to God. And she's worried that things wouldn't be clean and have that fresh scent. Can 
Can you delete Mark? Well, maybe it's not so hard to believe. Actually, maybe we are all a little like Martha sometimes. I mean, how many times have I asked God to do something and then try to take it back? Because there might be something unpleasant. How often do we feel the panic that comes with realizing that the fulfillment of our prayers mean having to face just plain space. Like Mary, we want Jesus to walk miracles as long as there is nothing to offer our senses or sensibilities. But Jesus knew that sometimes we have to believe beyond fear. And he reminded Martha that the, his promise that her faith would be rewarded. That she would see the glory of God. So they moved the stone away. And Jesus prayed aloud for the benefit of those who had gathered. He said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. And he added that he knew the Father always hears him, but that he wanted those present to believe that the Father had sent him. And then he shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus walked out of the tomb. Still covered the cloth stripes with which with they have bound him before placing him in the tomb. And Jesus said, unbind him and let him go. <coughs> it was definitely in her. Jesus had brought Lazarus back to life. As others witnessed the new life of Lazarus, they came to believe this. They came to believe in Jesus. They saw what Jesus did. No person had ever raised someone from the dead. You see, I'm willing to believe that there's something in the story for us. Maybe like Martha, maybe like Mary. You have asked Jesus to help, and you are sure he hasn't heard. Remember, Jesus will always answer when or how we expect. But that doesn't mean our requests are unheard. Jesus hears everything we say. He watches. Jesus even knows the number of fears we have in our head. Imagine. We worry about those when I wash it, I see all these ears for me. He knows how many still remain in us. Jesus will find a way to even use the most painful of situations and bring glory to the Father. Or maybe you are at a place like Martha where you feel confused or something Jesus said. Perhaps you are struggling with the word of God. Remember that though there are some lessons we may not fully understand how true. And he's a scholar can talk in the Bible. So when we read the Bible, and I don't know what it means, I go to the computer. We may still trust in Jesus because he know who he, we know who he is, and we know who sent him. And sometimes you just keep faith and continue to walk with Jesus. He will take us to a place where all becomes clear. Or maybe, like Martha, you have turned to Christ for help, but fear that the answer will be messy in some way. 
Jesus knows our doubts but wants us to keep the faith so that we too will see the glory of the Lord. Or maybe we are like Lazarus. Who feel as though the life has gone out of you? Perhaps that life has passed you by. Maybe you are feeling soulless and wrapped up in things that wouldn't let us go. Jesus offers us a new life. He will call you by your name and lose that experience. And then, as others, listen to this, as others witness the change that Jesus makes in you, which is us, they too will come to believe and will find new life in Jesus. That is the way it has always been. Those who answer Christ's call to new life find a teacher and a friend for whom they are willing to die for. But of course, it is Jesus who died for us that we may have eternal life. You know, funny, I started the sermon this morning by telling you it's a matter of life and death. But the truth is <clears throat> that with Jesus it's a really a matter of life, life, and life. Amen. Amen. Amen.